Coming up tonight, all hospitals are to defer non-urgent surgeries and admissions until further notice to conserve resources. This comes as COVID-19 cases show no signs of abating as Singapore battles its worst community outbreak in almost a year. And in all seriousness, Singapore's official vaccine video starring Pua Chu Kang goes viral worldwide. V is for vaccine. V is for victory over COVID. Don't play play. I got my shot. Get yours too, okay? Your father never did you. <laughs> This is The Straits Times News Night. I'm Dylan Ang. Good evening, I'm Chao Suen. The Ministry of Health announcing this evening that it has asked all hospitals in Singapore to defer non-urgent operations and admissions until further notice in order to conserve resources across the healthcare sector. Non-urgent specialist outpatient clinic appointments will also be postponed. Now this comes as the number of COVID-19 community cases here rises and the cluster at Tan Tok Seng Hospital grows. An 88-year-old patient from the cluster has since died. TTSH has progressively ceased admissions of new inpatient cases until further notice. All Singapore Civil Defence Force ambulance cases will also be diverted to other public and private hospitals for the purpose of load balancing. MOH urges members of the public to visit the emergency department only for emergency and life-threatening conditions. Longer wait times are also expected as other hospitals step up to support TTSH. Now all this comes as Singapore is seeing its worst COVID-19 community outbreak in almost a year. Eight of the ten community cases reported today are linked to the nurse at Tan Tok Seng Hospital and were detected from the testing of patients and staff. And since the first case was found last Wednesday, the cluster at TTSH has grown to 35. Besides the hospital cluster, there are now eight other open clusters in Singapore. One doctor told The Straits Times that he expects the number to go up, not down, in the coming days. The number of clusters, I think, will continue to grow, even though I think that it is still relatively under control, but we have to be mindful in the context that a lot of the clusters are being recognised because of our systems that are in place right now. But it's also a reflection of the fact that we are very vulnerable. We have weak things and we have to be mindful about that. And we as a community will have to also understand that it is not business as usual. We have to play um, a huge role in trying to prevent a lockdown. We don't want to go back to that, but we have to play a huge role. And one of the defining uh, roles that we have to play is to try to get to as many people uh, to be on the vaccine, to get the vaccine. We know we can't prevent all the asymptomatic uh, infections or mild infections, but we do know that severe infections and, and mortality is, is terrible with COVID-19. And that's what we don't want to have because it will consume resources, hospitals, and, and you know you can see that playing out in some countries. So I think we have to, all get as many people out there to get vaccinated uh, and we should all strive to do that together as a community. Besides the cluster at Tan Tok Seng Hospital, another one we're keeping a close watch on is the ICA cluster, which has so far remained at nine. ICA telling the Straits Times that 32 officers at Changi Airport who were close contacts of the officer infected with COVID-19 have so far tested negative. Another 100 officers tested as a precaution have also returned negative results. The infected officer, a 38-year-old Singaporean who was deployed at Terminal 1, was found to have COVID-19 on April 27. And now, since the unlinked case of a 15-year-old female student was detected on Friday, authorities have conducted a swabbing exercise at her school. The Ministry of Education telling The Straits Times that 99% of Edgefield Secondary School's 1,500 students, staff and external vendors have completed their swab tests by Sunday. The school will move to full home-based learning this week as it will take time for the swab test results to come through. It's been a long time coming. Singapore and Malaysia have agreed to allow cross-border travel on compassionate grounds from May 17th. 
Foreign Affairs Minister Vivian Balakrishnan and his Malaysian counterpart Datuk Sri Hishamuddin Hussein made the announcement yesterday. They said that details including whether there's a need for quarantine will be released later. Uh, this is a scheme which is really needed because of the extensive ties of kinship between Malaysia and Singapore. Parents, grandparents, uncles, aunties, cousins, and when family crises occur, people want to get together. And therefore, bearing in mind this very special close relationship between the people of Singapore and the people of Malaysia, it is necessary to have schemes like this. And in other news tonight, five Kutekwat hospital staff members, including those in management roles, will face disciplinary action after human error led to wrong treatment for some breast cancer patients. The disciplinary action meted out ranged from stern warnings to financial penalties and cessation of employment. KTPH said the error was not discovered due to a failure to conduct rigorous checks. The hospital also apologised to the affected patients and said it will compensate them. 19-year-old Singaporean Derek Ng De Ren was charged today after he threatened to kill English Premier League footballer Neil Mopi and his family. The Premier League had alerted Singapore police after investigations showed that the person responsible for the serious online abuse towards Mopi was in Singapore. The threats were made last June and July via Instagram. In one message on June 26, Ng allegedly said, Your family will be attacked later in the day, just watch. He is understood to have sent the messages just days after Mopé had scored the winning goal against Arsenal. Ng intends to plead guilty to his charges and the case is adjourned till May 31st. Now let's take a look at what's been trending on social media today. Now this footage of thousands of partygoers packed tightly together, maskless and dancing might seem like it was taken months ago before the pandemic hit and wiped out all of such events. But guess what? The rave was just this past weekend. Liverpool played host to about 6,000 people across Friday and Saturday, but performers like Fatboy Slim entertained the crowds. Ticket holders did not need to socially distance or wear face coverings, but needed a negative COVID test result before being allowed in. The club nights are part of a series of government trials on crowd safety in the midst of the pandemic. No new date has been set for the Manchester United and Liverpool clash after the postponement yesterday, the first time a game has been postponed because of fan protests. Violent scenes as some 200 fans broke into the grounds to protest against the Glazer family's ownership of the club following last month's European Super League announcement, which United were originally a part of before it pulled out. Question is, when will the postponed game be played? There appears to be no midweek slot this week as United travel to Rome for their Europa League semi-final. Definitely a scheduling nightmare for the authorities. The postponed game also means that Manchester City's champagne remains on ice after they were denied the chance to be crowned Premier League champions this weekend. A loss against Liverpool yesterday would have meant that second place United sealed the title for their rivals. This weekend also saw the end of an era for Juventus after nine seasons as Italian champions, with Inter Milan clinching the Serie A title. Scenes of jubilation in the dressing room as Antonio Conte's side celebrated going 13 points clear with four games to go. It is Inter's first Scudetto since 2010 when Jose Mourinho helped them win both the Serie A and Champions League. Inter is now also the first foreign-owned Italian club to win the Scudetto under Steven Zhang, who appears to be the youngest ever president to win as well at 30. Massive congratulations, guys. And before we go, back to the 90s, Singapore has again revived its favourite caricature, the singing, rapping Pua Chu Kang, in a bid to encourage vaccine take-up. Some say la, some say la. Guess who's back? It's Uncle Pua. And me, Rosie. Everybody, it's time to vaccinate. Faster, do la. No time to waste. But you are easy, confirm say. Aya, Rosie, come on, be brave. The vaccine is not anyhow wet. And against COVID, it will protect. Singapore, don't wait and see. When I get your shot. 
The video stars Gurmit Singh and Irene Ang as Pua and his wife Rosie, addressing concerns about the vaccine and urging Singaporeans to get their shot. Guess that's one way to get people talking and thinking about the vaccine. Now, I'm not so sure the song's making it on my daily playlist though. I heard you laughing at your desk while listening to the song. Well, there's a particular line in the song that felt so out of place and was so amusing to me for some reason. And since I know my father watches this show, Hey Daddy, this isn't about you. V is for vaccine. V is for victory over COVID. Don't play play. I got my shot. Get yours too, okay? Your father never did you. <laughs> And that wraps up the Straits Times News Night. Do visit straitstimes.com to see more news and videos. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting the button below. Have a great evening. We'll see you tomorrow.